treat your home and repel termites for years. E. Cola is the leader and best in alternative and traditional termite control. Don't let termites make a paradise out of your home. Call us for a free termite inspection at 877-332-BUGS, 877-332-BUGS, or online at termitelady.com. E. Cola, powerful termite and pest control. As gentle as a butterfly. 877-332-BUGS. 734, good morning information. Now I have found grocery gal Amy Goldsmith. She was on aisle six. Uh, good morning, Amy. <laughs> good morning. Not sure quite what happened. Yeah, that, that was weird. All right, well, anyway, Amy, we had a few listeners call in with questions, and I know that uh, you received a question yourself, actually. So let's uh, talk about that. This is something I guess that people are dealing with in their grocery stores. Yes, yes. So I got a question, um, and I've been I've been getting this question a lot, and it's about um, opening those plastic produce bags while shopping for fruit and vegetables, and the difficulty in opening them during COVID. Because I guess you know we're all used to licking our fingers; we don't even realize it. Trying to open a plastic bag and to get traction, you know, and and so um, and I'm seeing people struggling in the produce section trying to open bags. So people have been asking, how do we do it? How do we do it without licking our fingers, you know, and, and with, during COVID? Yeah, so here's right. my solution, right? So grab a plastic bag and look for lettuce or another produce that's kept wet and touch the wetness on the lettuce and then you open your bag and get some traction from that moisture from the, the vegetables. Um, another trick is to use like a, a wipe, you know, some sort of, you know, handy wipe to, to moisten your finger. Um, and, and also use the stick from the produce on the bag for traction, and, there, and there's a finger-thumb snap with the bag in between that you can open to it. So if you put the plastic bag between your thumb and forefinger and snap, or I guess your middle finger and thumb and snap it, 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 it can open too. But for me, the wet produce trick is the winner. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. I've been struggling, so for me, I've been sneaking my fingers underneath my mask and doing it that way. So, But that's good to know. Um, also, we got uh, this question from a listener. Are there certain foods that promote uh, good blood circulation? This might be something people are, are dealing with. You know, Is there something they should be eating? Um, yeah, so let me start off by clarifying I am not a doctor or a registered dietitian. So always talk to your physician first or a medical professional before making shifts in your diet. Having said that, there are, um, there, there are foods that are known to help with circulation. Cayenne pepper is one. Research indicates that if you ingest cayenne pepper, it increases circulation, it improves, improves blood vessel strength, and reduces plaque buildup in your arteries. And with more, these spicy peppers are frequently included in pain relieving creams because they can encourage blood flow to the affected area. And so there is a liquid cayenne pepper that can be added to teas as well, not just the, the, the dry, you know, kind of seasoning type. Also, pomegranates. We talked about the benefits of pomegranates a few weeks ago. And a study in 19 active people found that ingesting 1,000 milligrams of pomegranate extract 30 minutes before working out increased blood flow. Uh, blood vessel di diameter and increased exercise performance. And I know there's only 19 active people, but other studies have demonstrated that daily consumption of pomegranate juice during or before weight training also reduced soreness and muscle damage and inflammation in, in, elite, in elite weightlifters. And we talked about the benefits of, of pomegranate a couple weeks ago. And pomegranate overall is just great for you. Yeah. Um, onion, yeah. Onions also are an excellent source of flavonoid antioxidants, which benefits heart flow. Um, heart health, and this vegetable also improves circulation by helping your arteries and veins widen when blood flow increases. And in a 30-day study, um, in 23 men, taking 4.2 grams of onion extract daily significantly improves blood flow and artery dilation after meals. And, and onions also have an anti-inflammatory property, which can boost blood flow and heart health by reducing inflammation in veins and arteries. Ah, boy, that is good to know. Some good information. Real quick, I wanted to also thank uh, Diane Allman Stevens. Uh, she came by with uh, pomegranate preserves because she heard you and I talking about pomegranate. So, Diane, thank you very much. And, Amy, if I've got any left when I see you here pretty soon, I'll share uh, it with you. <laughs> thank you so much. That's great. That's yeah. wonderful. Thank yeah. you, Diane. I'm so Definitely. happy to hear that. All right, we've got uh, grocery gal Amy Goldsmith uh, joining us here, 738. Um, so something else, what about garlic? Um, it sounds like for a lot of people, they say garlic can fix everything. So is garlic good for you? 
Yeah, garlic is on this list too. And in a study with 42 people with coronary artery, artery disease, those who consume garlic powder tablets um, containing 1,200 milligrams of allicin twice daily for three months experienced a 50% improvement. That's a lot. A 50% improvement in blood flow through the upper arm artery compared to a placebo group. So listen, you've got cayenne pepper, you've got pomegranates, onions, and garlic. But there's also beets and walnuts and citrus fruits and berries and cinnamon, turmeric, leafy greens, and omega-3s that are found in salmon and mackerel. And you can also take an omega-3 supplement. And what's, um, it's really just all the usual healthy suspects, right? Like I always say, shop the perimeter of the store. Yeah. Um, and of course, with more, leading a healthy lifestyle, you know, abstaining from smoking, staying active, maintaining healthy weight, and eating a well-rounded diet really can boost blood flow and overall health. All right, very good. Now, speaking of eating better, we had a caller ask if, <laughs> and I may be guilty of this, but if people are eating more junk food, um, have sales increased during the pandemic? Um, and also, what about low-fat chips? I guess a lot of us might be home more, so it might be a tendency to kind of reach for those foods maybe that aren't so good for you. Yes, yes. So at the outset of the coronavirus pandemic, snack sales climbed and consumers turned to comfort food, right? Chips. Um, many shop, shoppers sold their carts with also nostalgic foods like mac and cheese, cookies, chips. And in fact, Campbell's canned um, soup and Pepperidge Farm goldfish crackers were a few brands that saw significant sales jumps. Um, in particular, sales, like I said, of chips and popcorn, even the squeezable cheese spread, which I, I we have to talk about that another time because that is the most nauseating thing ever, but we'll just go with the squeezable right. cheese spread. <laughs> yeah. We're at the beginning of, of the pandemic for supermarket news were like big in sales, as were those for yogurt and yogurt drinks, frozen cookies, and frozen pretzels. And so, yeah, so uh, snacks, food, and, you know, I guess junk food, comfort food, we definitely saw an increase in sales. We also saw, uh, as you may remember, the huge surge in baking as, because it's an activity. So, you know, you might remember it was hard to find yeast and flour. Oh, yeah. So now what about candy? Um, I think you and I were talking about uh, chocolate and, and uh, trick-or-treat candy the last time. So what uh, interesting candy trends have there been? <laughs> so I think this is really interesting. Gum, mint, hard sugar candy, gift box chocolates breast fresheners have all seen a, dec a decrease in dollar sales over the last year, and specifically in the COVID months, which is crazy to think we're almost inching on a year of COVID, but all of those sales have gone down. But it's interesting, right, because the dip in sales makes sense as there are fewer gathering opportunities to, let's say, give a chocolate gift box. Oh, yeah. And consumers, right, and consumers usually reach for gum and mint for functional reasons rather than emotional reasons. So with COVID-19 impacting so much of our daily lives and drastic, drastically reducing you know, our interactions, there's less of a functional reason to reach for products that freshen your breath. So um, we've seen a decrease in those kinds of sales. And look, we're working from home, so there's no longer a commute, which means we're not maybe stopping off at 7-Eleven to make impulse purchases like gum or something. Oh, sure, yeah. And we're also, wear you know, and we're also wearing masks, so we're maybe not as concerned about our bad breath, apparently. Um, so, but overall, yes, chocolate candy bar sales are up. Mm, all right. And also, we had another listener call in to ask if there will be a shortage of seafood during the holidays. Uh, we talked about turkeys, and I guess we're going to be okay, but the smaller turkeys might be a concern. So what about seafood? Correct, correct on the turkeys, and no, no shortage of seafood. Remember, all that fish in the past was really going to restaurants nationwide. They have reduced consumption. So the fish is now headed to grocery stores, and Kruger reported a 40% increase in fish sales. That's a lot. That means that most people aren't buying fish from the grocery store. They're probably ordering when it's in a restaurant, or they're going to a special fish market. So while we don't expect shortages, you know, be sure to plan ahead. You may need to buy and freeze to ensure you have a specific type of fish. Remember, it's fresh, frozen fresh products, right? So. And maybe the store in the morning and gone by the afternoon with the next shipment coming the following day. So if that doesn't fit into your cooking timeline, purchase in advance. And I will say, because people are buying more fish at the grocery store, the prices have gone up because the stores can get it. So 
just keep that in mind too. All right, interesting there. And Amy, as we talked about before, um, if people need to worry about um, you know stockpiling items, you know, for the upcoming you know next few months during the holidays with flu season and COVID going on, and I think we discussed that uh, that really was not necessary, correct? I mean, I I don't think that it is. I feel that our distribution has improved from the food industry side. We get it more. Now, having said that, I just heard yesterday that Costco was running low on toilet paper. Mm. Now, is it in the back? And they didn't put it out and someone was an alarmist and it's, you know, they're being silly about it. Right. it that very well could be. Mm. I think, as I mentioned before, I would have a week's worth of items that you would need that you can freeze or put in the cu- the, cu- the cupboard um, and just leave it there for now in case you do get sick and you don't want to deal with having to order or go out and infect other people. So it's good to just have some things on hand. You don't have to worry about it. You could always use Instacart if you get sick to bring stuff in, um, fresh items in or ask a neighbor or family member or something. But I don't think you need to stockpile. Yeah, I, really I, I don't think you need 100 rolls of toilet paper in the next week or so, right? <laughs> uh, no, yeah. I, I don't think that you do. I think it's really just about being prepared for if you, you know, hope if you get sick, hopefully you don't. You just have to deal with it. Right. All right. There you go. Some great information as usual. And again, thanks for your questions out there. But you can follow Amy and direct message her. Any questions through Facebook and also on Instagram at The Grocery Gal. Amy Goldsmith, uh, our guest today, The Grocery Gal. And Amy, will talk to you hopefully next week. Absolutely. Thanks, Ben. All right. 745. Don't forget birthdays and anniversary wishes. 928-1440 is my now number. Your political insights from ABC News. Election worker.